What's up guys? So today we have a battle box. Very excited about it. It is March 2022. So today's knife is a very different one. We have a Strike Industries folder. All right, this is the clear one. They also have a black one. Um, and uh, this knife um, has a blade, as you would imagine. However, it also has a little tool on the back here that's basically built into the liner it's supposed to be a package opener so we're gonna try that right now because this is just taped up here we're gonna see how good this does at opening packages broke the tape for this side broke the tape totally fine but of course you gotta have some blade action right so we're gonna go ahead and open it to cut the bottom one so yeah, I mean, interesting uh, concept to save your blade, especially with uh, tape, because you get a lot of tape residue and stuff, and makes your blade all sticky and nasty. They kind of integrated that little piece in there. Pretty interesting. Not the first package. I've probably opened 15 packages like this. It's a little hit and miss. Uh, some tape zips right through, just like this. This is a single layer of shipping tape. Uh, but I have had some security tape that it will, I mean, it's security tape. It has like those threads through it just does not bust through that very easily or multiple layers of tape or even duct tape duct tape it, it kind of like just you know creases it but anyway interesting uh, concept there i'll definitely do a video on this in the future you let me know down in the comment section what you think this knife looks like because i have an idea in my mind already we'll see if anyone else knows but anyway let's open up this battle box so we have mission number 85 Go ahead and read the mission brief here. Fold it over. I don't want any uh, sneak peeks. Um, it's time to jump into Mission 85 of Battle Box. Spring is right around the corner, and many of the supplies in the shipment come from companies recommended by our beloved Battle Box subscribers. From provisions, uh, safety signaling, first aid, organization, and lighting to an amazing Wooks axe in the Pro Plus. Wooks, W O O X. Uh, so let us not wait any longer and flip the page to get into the Mission 85 breakdown. All right, so put that off to the side there for now. Roll my sleeves up here and see what we got. Now, first off, I noticed this, my medic pouch, which is filled with stuff. Um, I want to say we've had, I don't know if it's the exact same pouch. Uh, definitely different because I remember there was a, um, a cross, you know, like a medic uh, patch that was on it. I like that this one is, is this sewn in. I believe it is. Yeah, the stitching itself is the uh, the plus sign for medical stuff. And of course, you have the medical uh, zipper pulls. Super cool. My medic right in the front here. I do like this uh, setup. Let me push that box back a little bit here. Let's take a, a quick peek inside. Pull that down. Got the zippers on either side, or I guess you could just pull this whole tab here. And that opens it up. And this is packed with goodies. Um, you can never go wrong with medical gear. I say it all the time for, for many people, medical gear is boring. They're like, how many band-aids can I get? Well, it is super important and I keep medical gear everywhere. All right, this has, uh, looks like a good variety of different stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, every medical kit is obviously gonna be a little bit different from each other. Uh, I do like that they have a little marker in there so you can mark stuff too, like if you have a, a wound you know, when the wound occurred, you know, things like that, especially if you're putting a tourniquet on, that's super important. I don't know. Yes, I do, because there's a tourniquet right on top. Very, very important. <clears throat> if you put a tourniquet on someone or yourself to date, or not date, you know, you obviously the date doesn't matter that much. The exact hour and time it was on, because the doctor, when you do get medical uh, attention, they need to know how long you've cut off your circulation and your, your blood flow. So just uh, interesting stuff. I always recommend uh, having medical kits everywhere. And when you do have medical kits, I recommend customizing them to your own needs. You know, there might be stuff in here that's not applicable for your uh, situation, you know, where you live, your area. Sometimes that happens as well. And sometimes you just wanna add your own stuff. Like for example, what am I doing here? <laughs> this uh, this ripped down, I do think, oh yeah, okay. This whole panel comes up front. A little confused there for a second. This whole panel velcro to the front there, and this snaps together. Very nice. Um, what was I going to say? I lost my train of thought. 
Uh, yeah, you want to uh, customize it pretty much to your specific needs. Sometimes there's stuff in there you don't like. Like I saw a pair of scissors. I'm sure the scissors are fine. I have other scissors that work very well for you know fabric specifically. I don't know if those will work. I'll test those before I keep it in there. Um, I've added like extra burn cream because that's a common thing. It's very uncommon that you're going to need to use a tourniquet just from your day-to-day -day life unless you're in a car accident or get a gunshot wound or something. Uh, most people don't. So something like burn gel and upgraded ba uh, not batteries, band-aids. Like, you know, the band-aids that come with these kits more times than not, they're the plastic band-aids. I really prefer fabric band-aids just for longevity. They, they stick, you know, better. They stay on better. They're more comfortable. Um, so like that's something I always swap out, um, you know, but specifically uh, the burn cream because that's something that's very common. You know, you're drinking hot coffee, you spill yourself or spill coffee on yourself or who knows, boiling, you're boiling water, make a tea, whatever the situation is, you burn yourself, which is more common than needing a tourniquet. So I add stuff like that. So I always customize it. That's basically what I'm getting at here. All right, so next we have, looks like a Sterno, maybe? Harlow Road, Candles for Adventure. All right, made in the USA. Four ounces, soy bug repellent candle, citronella essential oil. So we have a citronella candle, which is nice to literally just keep the bugs out. Uh, but obviously the, the major benefit um, is for a survival candle. It's going to last a long time burning there. So good thing to have. Put that off to the side. And not to mention, candles are also something you can use for fire starting. Oftentimes people don't think about that. Even cheap birthday candles. If you need to start a fire, the second you get a flame, and it doesn't matter whether you're you know, rubbing sticks together or using a lighter, once you have a physical flame, you want that flame to last as long as possible to actually get a bigger fire going. You know what I mean? Like I know people who can use flint and steel to get a fire going, but just that initial fire, and then they, they struggle turning that little, little itty bitty fire into an actual campfire. That's something you need to practice. It's not about just getting a flame. You have to use that flame to make a bigger flame that's uh, sustainable, you know, that lasts. Uh, and learning how to maintain a fire is very important as well. Birthday candles are a fantastic thing to add to your bags because, I mean, the wax itself, you can drip on different things. And you can even put it on a wound in an emergency and right? have a little bit of a wax seal. Uh, not the most ideal thing, but they're versatile. And having a birthday candle will stay lit a lot longer than if you just light, you know, a leaf on fire and, and try to use that. So just some different things to think about. You can get pretty creative with that kind of stuff. I've seen these before. I actually have one. Many years ago, this is a storm whistle, all right? These things are super loud. It's claiming to be the world's loudest whistle. I don't know about that. There's tons of whistles out there. Um, but yeah, whistles are a huge thing. Uh, I talked about this a while back when I swapped out my um, emergency tool for my car. I still actually keep multiple uh, of those tools that, you know, break windows and, you know, cut your seatbelt, those uh, strap cutters. But one of them had a whistle in it. It was the old Benchmade one, I think. Um, and a whistle is a, a underrated thing to have in a vehicle. You can get uh, into an accident where you're not seen. You know, I live in the mountains and hills and stuff. If I roll over the side of a hill into the trees or something, people could be driving back and forth and not even notice that I'm down there. So making noise, especially if I'm pinned in the car, I can't move or something, that's actually a really big deal. You know, uh, you can yell, but you get tired, your voice gets hoarse, you know, your mouth gets dry, your throat gets dry and ripped up and Sometimes you just, you can't yell forever, you know, for help. So having something like this where you can use minimal effort blowing into it. And I'll give you a little example here if you haven't heard these before. And of course, it's not going to come out exactly the same through the video audio. You can see an interesting design here. And it'll give you that little toot. It is. <laughs> it's ear piercingly loud, okay, with very little uh, breath needed. All right, so even like a little kid can blow into this and make a ton of noise or someone who's a senior. This is something like, you know, we always focus on survival stuff. I just mentioned that. It's something I wanted to talk about. Let's say you have a grandmother or grandfather or a, an old uncle, aunt, whatever, any kind of senior. This is something you could put on a little lanyard and then keep it around their neck, you know? I mean, you guys might have seen the life alerts, you know, where they, they fall, you push the button and, you know, calls the police or whatever, they send EMS right away. Something like this is extremely underrated. If you have an, an elderly person living in your home, or you know, maybe even worse, they, they live alone somewhere, and they might fall and get hurt and not be able to get up, break a hip, break a knee, break a leg, break an ankle, whatever. Uh, just something like this. These are super cheap. Throw it on a necklace, have them wear it all the time. You know what I mean? And if they do happen to fall or need something, you need some help, they can blow into it and, and get some attention. So very underrated uh, thing there. Put that off the side, I like that quite a bit. What else we got going on here? 
Compact Provisions. This is their BP5S Emergency Food. One box feeds one adult for one day. That's simple. So you can, uh, if you want to stock up on this stuff. Um, looks like they're individual, maybe little biscuits. If you've ever seen the uh, emergency food rations for like life rafts and stuff. I did a video on that many years ago. That stuff's delicious. <laughs> it is, uh, it tastes like a, um, like one of those, uh, I'm trying to think what it is. Not a, it's a cookie, not a butter cookie. I can't think of what it is called. It's similar to a butter cookie, uh, but it just, it was phenomenal. It's like a dessert. Um, obviously eating it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner all day would get a little bit old quickly for a lot of people, but it's not, it's not something you have to like, you know, gag trying to, uh, you know, eat in an emergency. It's something that's actually enjoyable. Um, but of course that's personal preference, I suppose. So this seems like something very similar. There's the nutritional facts. One bar is 265 calories. There's nine per box. All right. So you can do the math there on calories for the day. And obviously that's, if you're working, you don't need that many calories to just survive if you're sitting around uh, but yeah this stuff is awesome this is also very underrated i pack this stuff away everywhere i have it you know like at my parents house i have an emergency first aid kit that's on the wall i have emergency food in there i have different water purification devices in addition to a ton of first aid you know so you keep this stuff everywhere you never know when you're going to need it or where you're going to be so that is an awesome addition then we have this uh lucy uh, Pro Outdoor 2.0 Solar Inflatable Light Mobile Charging Unit. Whew. Okay, so I'm wondering if this is the same brand as that pillow. I know there's a company that made those uh, inflatable pillows that had the light in it, which I still have, which are awesome. And they sent those like when there's natural disasters and stuff, you know, earthquakes or tornadoes, uh, tsunamis, whatever. They drop those things off like crazy for those people. I'm wondering if that's the same brand. I don't recall. But this seems really interesting. So you basically have a, looks like a solar panel. And this whole unit is inflatable. So obviously you blow into it to puff it up. And puffing it up, what you're really doing is you're creating an area for that light to diffuse and bounce around. So it becomes a ball of light instead of just a little flashlight. And they're showing, I mean, I'm sure something like charging a cell phone would be fine. It says 150 lumens, uh, cool white LEDs. Let's see, some specs on here. Mobile charging capabilities, 150 lumens, lasting up to 50 hours on a single charge. This compact solar light will take you further than ever before. Um, Weighs 5.5 ounces, USB, rechargeable solar. Yeah, the thing with the solar, oh, I'm also reading here, 150 pound uh, pressure capacity. Like in other words, if you were 130 pounds, you could sit on it, you know. Uh, it's supposed to withhold 150 pounds of pressure before it would pop or rupture. Interesting. Four modes, 10 cool white LEDs. Yeah, pretty cool here. I had a thought, and I read about the, the weight thing there, and I lost my thought. Man, I'm all over the place today. Adjustable base strap. So yeah, I mean, no, stuff like this, like I said, it's just something you pack away. You could use this stuff camping, Oftentimes there is a little conversion from camp gear and survival gear like people pack away survival gear and they don't touch it But oftentimes like me and Christina if we're going camping we take that stuff out we test that stuff You know we use that stuff in a camp scenario where you know life is fine and we don't have an emergency uh, But it's good to familiarize yourself with that stuff and oftentimes it's just you know It's just uh, something you can use in a camp setting. It doesn't have to be an emergency So that's one of those uh, items like that All right, what else do we have here? Oh, we've gotten these before. I remember these. Billy Bands. My Medic Billy Bands. I'm going to read about that a little bit more. But I do recognize these. I think we got these. I could be mistaken. And then we have that Wooks. That little hatchet. That's our, I guess, the knife of the month. Since it does have a blade on it. Uh, here's a 20% off exclusive promo code. Battlebox22 for 20% off all their stuff. Looks like they have some uh, gun accessories too. See a nice rifle here? They have their own knife. Um, I'm wondering what they're selling. If they're selling the stocks, the bipod, I don't know exactly what, but something. So, let's take a look at this bad boy. Ooh, I do like this, uh, this black handle. Hold on a second. I don't know if this is... Oh, it's wood. It, it almost seemed like it was a synthetic, but it is wood that's presumably painted. Possibly some kind of coloring that's baked onto there, but I do like that it's black. That's kind of cool. And of course, our black uh, head there. You can see that raw wood from where that was staked. 
We do have, oh, okay, Wooks. It says 600 on there. I'm assuming maybe that's the size. They might have different sizes. And then we had the little rubber uh, cover for our edge. And our edge is not sharp. <laughs> not sharp at all. I don't know how to uh, really... How about this? Does that show that it's not sharp? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I just did a video on that uh, sharpening puck, and I'm definitely going to use it to uh, to sharpen this bad boy up. So that's a little disappointing. It's not like, you know, super sharp out of the box. It's not really... I mean, you don't need a, a tremendous sharp edge to, you know... Uh, break some wood, I, I suppose. You could split a little bit of wood, but you're certainly not going to make feather sticks or, 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 you know, chop into the side of anything. You're just basically using brute force and a somewhat thin, hard edge to, to split wood. But you definitely want to sharpen any kind of axe or hatchet. Uh, you want it as sharp as possible, so you have the least resistance as possible. Cool looking everything. Just have to uh, put an edge on there myself. Um, try to look to see if it's uh, consistent, excuse me. Sometimes there's like a sharp edge and then it went off a little bit, so the other part's dull, but the whole thing, like I said, I can I can rub it on my palm. Something you probably don't normally do <laughs> with a, a hatchet. So yeah, let me put this back on, even though it's not necessary right at the moment. But once I sharpen it, I will need that. These are great things to have, these little protective edges, because there's no sheath here. So, let's go ahead and take a look at our paperwork. Make sure everything's here and go over. Oh, there's a good shot of that uh, lantern, that solar powered charging lantern. And there's my phone in the background because I forgot to shut it off. All right, so um, storm whistle. We have our provisions, uh, food. We have our uh, candle. So the Mimetic uh, Billy Band Bundle. All right, let's read about that for a second here. Actually, you can just pause the screen there if you want to read it. So it'll save a little bit of time. But I do remember those. I feel like that was in a previous box. Then we have the uh, the Lucy, all right, emergency light. Then we have the trauma kit. You can see, let me pause that there. I'm curious to know, like, if you get these battle boxes, let me know if you got a, a different color. Uh, obviously, ours was that nice, you know, kind of coyote brown uh, type color. But I don't know if they're just putting random colors in different boxes or if they're all the same. I do like the red, obviously it's medical, but that's totally fine because there's plenty of indications that's medical gear. But you can read that right there if you want to see the content, read about it. And then we have the Wooks Thunderbird Axe, what they're calling it, Signature Edition. Um, just ripping through here real quick. Carbon steel head, C45, 1045 carbon. Uh, made in the USA. Well, hold on. Accessories for the outdoor, made in the USA and Italy. So available in black, blue, orange, or purple heads with black handles. So we got a black handle with a black head, which is pretty cool. But again, let me know if you get variants in these boxes. I'm curious. Uh, some of the colors are cool. I mean, I like the orange. Um, not particularly like the blue. The purple, I mean, it stands out, I suppose. I don't know. The orange is nice just because if you leave it, you know, laying on the, the woods ground with all the leaves or whatever debris around, it's just easy to see. Uh, but the black's cool. Black on black is always cool. So there's my phone again. So there you go, that is BattleBox Mission 85 for March 2022. Super cool. Right now I'm gonna shut the camera off and I'm gonna go sharpen this uh, Wooks up. Um, get a nice edge on that thing because I'm excited to, uh, to try it out. So that's all. Hopefully you guys have a fantastic day. Thanks for watching and I'll see you tomorrow with a brand new video. Take care.